if you want someone with personal integrity who can be trusted to fight corruption, then your choice is Dr. Balanga. You have in mind is someone you can trust to work tirelessly and selflessly for Ghana. Then it is Dr. Bahamira. Hey, you do If you want a leader with a profit record who you can trust to create jobs for the youth, then it is Dr. Bahamira. If you are looking for the man who has the vision and the commitment to prepare Ghana for the fourth industrial revolution, the digital revolution, then it is Dr. Balomia. Hey, you do all. If you are you looking all. for the man who is more committed to protecting and using the natural resources the benefit of Ghanaians, then the answer is Dr. Bahamia. Who will be more accountable to Ghanaians? A one-time president like my opponent or a person who can look to a long-term development of Ghana because he will return to you after four years to render an account for the long term. It is Dr. Bahamia. Who can you trust? Who can you trust to protect free senior high school education? The answer is Dr. Bahamia. Who, who has demonstrated to the development who has demonstrated a commitment to the development of deprived communities like the, our inner city communities and the Zongo communities? It is Dr. Bambia.
I will implement my own vision that I have applied. In all humility, I will ask you to give me the opportunity to become one of the most impactful presidents in Ghana's history. In conclusion, dear Ghana, what I have presented today are just highlights of our manifesto. There are many more details and policies that are found in the full version. I implore you and entreat you all to read the full manifesto. This manifesto we are launching today is a manifesto of hope, a manifesto anchored on bold solutions to usher in the golden age of good governance and accountability, and a manifesto of possibility focusing on quantum leaps in jobs and prosperity. Our positive mindset is built on a strong track record of innovations and achievements. And our uh, win together, it is possible. Thank you for attending. God bless you and God bless you.
of President Nana Kufuad. We have taken time to highlight these achievements because track record is a significant predictor of credibility and the potential to do more. We have catalogued them because in the MPP we view these as our obligation to the people from whom we draw our mandate. We have enumerated them precisely because they communicate our ability to respond to the numerous needs of different sections of our society. Indeed, we have listed them to show we remain committed to fulfilling the social contract we have with the good people of Ghana. Above all, the exercise we have undertaken confirms that hundreds of pledges that have been made to the Ghanaian people and broadly they have been kept and given the opportunity more impactful and forward-looking interventions will be implemented to move Ghana to the next level of, de of the development journey. A journey that will build on our successes to open opportunities for all. We promise to change. We promise change and we have made significant progress. Mr. President, history will be kind to you and you shall be remembered, remembered for your unprecedented achievements and the millions of lives you have touched. We are eternally grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, if there was any doubt to believe it is crystal clear from the data backed account we have given that our overall performance and track record are superior to that of my opponent and his party in virtually every sector. Virtually every sector we are superior. But I believe as a former president and a proud student of history, he knows that. And that is one part of the reason why he is avoiding a debate. The other part, of course, is about the courage and the confidence to put what he intends to do differently this time around with the power he seeks side by side to the vision I have for Ghana and the clear roadmap to getting the work done. That is the choice we are presenting to you, the Ghanaian voter, on December 7th. Ladies and gentlemen, notwithstanding our superior performance, there remains the fact that between 2020 and 2022, we experienced severe challenges triggered by the pandemic, which brought the wealth and our country to a thundering halt. The world experienced the greatest economic depression since the 1930s, with most countries recording negative GDP growth. Supply chain disruptions and the rising price of oil resulted in major increases in the prices of fuel, freight, and food across the globe. Indeed, Ghanaians were hit very hard by rising food prices, increased exchange rate depreciation, rising fuel prices, and rising transport fares. Our debt became unsustainable and had to be restructured. Bondholders saw a sharp decline in their net worth following the painful yet unavoidable debt restructuring program. We faced very, very challenging times, but with calm leadership and the support and understanding of the good people of Ghana, we have weathered the storm. 
and the economy is firmly on the path of recovery with increasing GDP growth and declining inflation. It is gratifying to note that our policy intervention, but we know that for many families, the cost of living is still very high. The hardship is real, and we commit to doing more to relieve the difficulties Ghanaians are facing. We, if we are equally committed to creating more of job opportunities that will significantly reduce youth unemployment among the national population that has increased over 5 million in the last eight years alone. We have created so far 2.3 million jobs, the most of any government in the Fourth Republic. But youth unemployment remains a major concern and that confronts us and we are committed to doing even more. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, it is better to continue with a party that has created more jobs than any other in the Fourth Republic than go back to a party and a leader who after four years of doing so created more unemployment than any government in the Fourth Republic. Ghana, Ghana needs bold solutions to deal with the challenges we face. And that is what I am offering in asking for the mandate of the Ghanaians. This manifesto that we are launching lays out a comprehens our comprehensive plan to take Ghana to the next level of growth, prosperity, under a selfless leader with bold solutions for jobs and businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, my vision, as I have stated, is to create a tent big enough to accommodate every Ghanaian tap into the resourcefulness and talent of our people, irrespective of our different ethnic, political, and religious backgrounds, to channel our energies into building the kind of country that assures food sufficiency, safe, prosperous, and dignified future for all Ghanaians, to create sustainable jobs with meaningful pay for all, and for Ghana to participate fully in the fourth industrial revolution using systems and data. To realize this vision, we must collectively have a mindset of possibilities, not impossibilities. There is a critical failure of mindset that manifests itself in the absence of core values patriotism, and principles within our society. We need to invigorate the can-do spirit of Ghanaians to believe that we can even do better than we have ever imagined if we put our minds to it. For example, students from Mamfi Girls and Prempe College have won international robotic competitions against their peers in the US, Germany, South Korea, and so on. Recently, Dr. Angela Tabiri from Ashaima was crowned the world's most interesting mathematician after a global competition with some of the best mathematicians in the world. The mindset of possibilities must be inculcated in our children from home and school. This is why we are going to introduce a growth mindset curriculum in our schools to help students build critical skills such as problem solving, risk taking, opportunity spotting, and design thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we have experienced a major economic crisis and with your support weathered the storm. But we are not yet where we want to be. It is therefore very important to protect and expand our rebounding economy to attain and sustain macroeconomic stability with low inflation, low interest rates, exchange rate stability, and low budget deficits. Fiscal discipline and private sector empowerment will be the key to realizing our commitment to job and wealth creation. To sustainable, re sustainably reduce the budget deficit and interest rates, my government, inshallah, will enhance fiscal discipline through an independent fiscal responsibility council enshrined in the Fiscal Responsibility Act. The Fiscal Responsibility Act will also be amended to add a fiscal rule that requires that budgeted expenditure in any year does not exceed 105% of the previous year's tax revenue. This will prevent the experience of budgetary expenditures based on optimistic revenue forecasts which do not materialize. Ladies and gentlemen, furthermore, my government will reduce the fiscal burden on government by empowering the private sector to do more. <laughs> Fundamental to building any modern prosperous society is ensuring that access to education and health is available to all and that there is a safety net for the most vulnerable. Under the two-term administration of His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Akufuado's government, I can say without any fear of contradiction that no past leader has done more to uplift the poor and the vulnerable in society than my boss. We put in place new ones and expanded existing social policies and programs for the masses across Ghana, like the free senior high school, free TVET, Agenda 111, one constituency, one ambulance, expanding school feeding, national health insurance care for childhood cancer, sickle cell patients, and kidney dialysis, and so on. I pledge to you that my government will protect and deepen all these programs that several millions of you depend on. From my, in, from my interactions with the people, the three top major concerns of Ghanaians are the cost of living, jobs, and roads. 2024 manifesto of the new patriotic party prioritizes what you, the Ghanaian people, say are your priorities. The manifesto lays out a clear path of how we plan to solve these major problems, among others. That is why my government will make business and jobs our number one priority. True to our philosophy, I believe the private sector has the capacity to provide jobs and create wealth for society. My administration will therefore incentivize the and empower the private sector to do more in complementing government in the provision and management of many infrastructures and other public services. This can reduce government expenditure, increase efficiency and accountability, create competition and improve maintenance. Yes, we have built more roads than any other government in the fourth republic. 
but we still have a lot to do. In the last eight years, we have been deliberate in empowering Ghanaian contractors to undertake many major infrastructural projects that would otherwise have gone to foreign contractors. My policies will encourage the private sector to take greater responsibility in the provision and management of critical infrastructures, including building hostels, housing, and schools, for government to rent or lease to own. The demand for road construction is massive, and this has historically placed a huge burden on the bank. I will make it more attractive for the private sector to also finance construction, management, and maintenance of roads through PPP concession. Also, I want to change our procurement culture drastically to tackle waste and corruption. My government will move towards leasing rather than outright purchase of goods such as vehicles, printing equipment, and so on. The private sector will have the responsibility for the maintenance of the equipment. Works, and it is supported by individualized credit scoring by the credit rating agencies. In the advanced countries, people are able to obtain mobile phones for free for under a contract arrangement with their telephone company. But people with the impossibility mindsets don't understand that these things are possible. In Ghana, such a credit system is yet to develop, and therefore life is harder for our workers. It is our goal to make it easier and cheaper to access credit by leveraging our data and our systems, such as the Ghana Card, the Ghana Post GPS, mobile money interoperability, Momo accounts, DDLA, GRA data, bank accounts, and so on to build an efficient credit system and a mortgage market in Ghana underpinned by an individualized credit scoring system and the digitalization of land titling and transfer. We look forward to starting individualized credit scoring in Ghana this year in 2024. And this will make it easier for Ghanaians to access credit at lower interest rates. My promise to you is that soon you, you in Ghana will no longer have to save before you are buying what you need. You can buy it on credit and pay small, 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 like they do in the advanced country. In the area of public infrastructure. We will, to reiterate, partner the private sector to finance, build, and rent or lease to own to government public infrastructure, including schools, housing, water, and roads, as well as equipment. We will revive and resource, resource including modern equipment and state-of-the-art workshops the Public Works Department, PWD, to be the primary government agency responsible for maintenance of public infrastructure across the country. We will fully implement and expand the District Road Improvement Program under which the local government, uh, local government have been supporting act we recently passed. We will establish a Women's Trade Empowerment Fund, WOTEF, to support women-owned businesses. We will, we will ensure, we will ensure gender parity in the award of government scholarships. And we will further improve the maternal health care program. 
We will pursue a women in diplomacy are adhered to. We will protect transborder water sources, notably the Bolsa River, and we will effectively manage all water bases in Ghana. With our mining policy, we believe that we are going to be able to deal with Kalansi, and that will help us protect the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, in the area of sports, the creative arts and tourism, we will use tax incentives, including a flat tax, to incentivize private sector investments in sports, tourism and the creative arts. We will implement an e-visa policy for all international visitors to come to make visa acquisition fast and convenient for visitors. We will roll out a visa-free policy for all African nations and all the Caribbean nationals visiting Ghana. We will also establish a travel protocol in partnership we will also, in partnership with the private sector, establish a streaming and digital management platform for Ghanaian content developers in the creative arts. We will also establish a travel protocol service for the creative community to enable artists, performers and other creatives on our international performances and shows. We will establish a sports development fund to develop sports infrastructure and talent development and grassroots sports programs, including the revival of Colts football and leagues across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, we will establish a Ghana School Sports Secretary, which will be an agency under the ministry responsible for sports in collaboration with other stakeholders such as the GES and Sports Federation. My government will seek school level collaboration with international sports bodies like the NBA and the NFL to make Ghana a hub for these emerging sports in Africa to create more opportunities for young people. We have already tried this with the NFL governing body for American football. We will, ladies and gentlemen, also upgrade the services of our football pitches to meet the highest international standards. And so we will be seeing an upgrading of the stadium in Kumasi, Accra, Kipos, Tamale, and Esipong to make sure that they meet the highest international standards. My government will also implement an effective maintenance module for our sports facility. We will continue the construction of AstroTech for every constituency to boost the development of our talents, including juvenile football. We have increased AstroTech from three that we inherited to over 150 in 2020. We are going to start an Operation or Olympics Glory program by dedicating resources towards the preparation of our athletes and their readiness for the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles, USA, including where necessary targeting specific sports for members. We will support the revival of the Premier League and clubs to improve commercial viability and create related jobs by directing policy through the National Lotteries Authority and the Gaming Commission to establish and fund a sports employment module to assist premier clubs fund operational expenses including trade player remuneration. And also we will provide a bus to each Premier League club. And we will build six 5,000-seater capacity stadium for the new regions, the six new regions. And we will build a standard stadium for Sudani because of their love of football and the building club. This we will promote school sports by establishing a Ghana school sports.
sports secretariat to create more opportunities for young people in sports and collaborate with international bodies, as I said, to make Ghana a hub for emerging sports. Ladies and gentlemen, in the area of protecting our borders, we will not compromise on efforts, on our efforts to ensure Ghanaians feel safe and are free to go about their daily lives. We will therefore continue to keep our borders protected, our communities and neighborhoods also safe. We will complete the 15 forward operating bases at our border frontiers of Ghana. This will allow the military to swiftly respond to any external hostilities and threats posed by terrorists in the South region. We will continue equipping Ghana's security service to build their capability in protecting the nation. And we will also focus on equipping the prison service as well as the fire service. We will deepen the cooperation of our neighboring states and the international community in the fight against violent extremists. We will recruit and deploy 20,000 more security personnel to enhance the visibility and strengthen the human resources of our security service. To make our neighborhoods safe, we are going to roll out 50,000 more anti-crime cameras, the CCTVs. And so far, we have rolled out about 11,000 CCTVs. But many districts and regions, many district capitals and regional capitals are not fully covered. So we ask national security to undertake an exercise to tell us what is needed so that we can see what is happening in every public street, in every regional capital, and every district capital, every day and every night. They came back and told us they needed 50,000 cameras, CCTVs, for us to be able to accomplish that directive. And my government will provide the 50,000 CCTV cameras so that we have complete in all our regional capitals and all our district capitals to basically make sure that if you commit a crime, we are going to catch you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will also roll up more body cameras for the police and other logistics. I believe that we can find, ladies and gentlemen, a broad, you know, find broad point of, of a national development plan which we can find consensus in areas such as education, healthcare, industrialization, and so on. I will support such a consensus national development plan. Specifically, I propose that we can amend Article 87 of the 1992 Constitution, as well as the NDPC Act at 741479, to mandate political manifestos, political party manifestos, Consequently, the economic and social policies of government, as well as budget, to be aligned to agree broad contours in specific sense. The current constitution was designed for political stability, and it has achieved that. We need to amend it with the help of parliament to align it more to national development. In that context, we are committed to the process to amend the 1992 Constitution through public consultation with a key emphasis, emphasis on the election of MMPCs to deepen democratic decentralization, extra share, and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to build a nation that cares for and invests in the vulnerable, like persons with disabilities, the aged, the street kids, the leopards, several posts. <laughs> that you have been here to me to usher me a new government, a new management staff that will give us additional results, a paradigm shift in how we manage.
protect our resources and let the benefits of nature reach out to every member of society. With all humility, I declare that I am a visionary leader who has I am your plan to create opportunities and decent paying jobs. I shall offer you a problem solving leadership built on my values of integrity, compassion, and sincerity. To this end, I have presented for your consideration our manifesto for 2024. The, the manifesto, the manifesto is given. It is giving hope. It is giving ideas. It is giving joy. It offers the opportunity to create a new generation of entrepreneurs through my business support initiative. It strives to make Ghana fully a fully digitalized nation in which you are able to access public services with ease. It incentivizes the private sector to expand and deliver good jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that as Vice President, the policies I have championed or initiated have impacted or will impact the lives of virtually every Ghanaian. I have, with the full blessings and support of my boss, promised and delivered on many groundbreaking policies that are happening for the first time in our history. These include championing the Ghana Card, Agenda 111, e-pharmacy, Ghana.gov, one constituency, one ambulance, zone of development, sports, motor insurance, database, renewal of NHIS on your mobile phone, Ghana Card number as your team number, snake number, NHIS number, zip line, delivery, If you want a leader with a 
commitment to prepare Ghana for the fourth industrial revolution, the digital revolution, then it is Dr. Baumia. Hey, you do all. If you, you are do looking all. for the man who is more committed to protecting and using the natural resources of the benefit of Ghanaians, then the answer is Dr. Baumia. Who will be more accountable to Ghanaian? A one-time president like my opponent or a person who can look to a long-term development of Ghana because he will return to you after four years to render an account for the long term. It is Dr. Bahamia. Who can you trust? Who can you trust to protect free senior high school education? The answer is Dr. Baumia. Who, who has demonstrated to the development, who has demonstrated a commitment to the development of deprived communities like the, our inner city communities and the Zongo communities. It is Dr. Bambia. Who can you trust? Who can you trust to provide all solutions to improve our economy, create jobs, and improve social protection? It is Dr. Bambia. Ladies and gentlemen, I am determined to make a difference, a positive difference. I am determined to use the experience I have earned over the last seven to eight years from the challenges and the priorities we have tackled, from the successes we have chalked, to the hard work to succeed with you on the priorities that I have laid before you today. I will work for you, with you, with honesty and integrity, with wisdom and decisiveness. I have clarity of mind as to what I want to do from day one as president. I will not ask you for a honeymoon to pull off and think about what to do with the responsibility you give me. I am prepared and ready to serve. You know what I stand for. You know my vision. I believe in the ingenuity of the Ghanaian. Together we can succeed in building a progressive society of possibility, enterprise, compassion, open opportunities, and shared prosperity for every Ghanaian, born rich or poor, born in the north or the south, born Christian or Muslim, born a girl or a man or a boy. I left out all a disabled person. I have never been president of Ghana before. I am presenting myself to you for the first time to ask for your precious vote to serve you as your president and to continue the development agenda of the NPP. When you make me president, inshallah, I will implement my own vision that I have outlined. In all humility, I will ask you to give me the opportunity to become one of the most impactful presidents in Ghana's history. In conclusion, Dear Ghana, what I have presented today are just highlights of our manifesto. There are many more details and policies that are found in the full version. I implore you and entreat you all to read the full manifesto. This manifesto we are launching today is a manifesto of hope, a manifesto anchored on both solutions to 
usher in the golden age of good governance and accountability and a manifesto of possibility focusing on quantum leaps in jobs and prosperity. Our positive mindset is built on a strong track record of innovations and achievements.